Today is Tuesday, March 20th, 2007, and this interview is being done for the Veterans History Project of the Library of Congress, and it's under the auspices of the Voluntary Services of the Veterans Administration Medical Center in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where I, Roland Shadig, am a volunteer, and I'm doing this interview of Joseph Elbert. I am assisted by my brother-in-law, Larry Hill, who was interviewed on this program just last evening. And uh, Joseph Elbert happens to be a neighbor of Larry Hill, and his address is 35 East All Saints, number 5 in Frederick, Maryland. And Mr. Elbert was born in Washington, D.C. on April 26, 1924, and he served in the Army from February 22, 1944, to January 29, 1946, and he was with the 88th Infantry Division, the 351st Infantry Regiment. Joe Elbert, I want to thank you very much for agreeing to be part of this history project and for your service to our country and to allow us to interview you and put your interview on film so that future generations will have some idea of what you, as a veteran of a war, uh, did in service to our country. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Very good. And, uh, you know, talking about war uh, times, the thing that, that bothers me most is the uh, uh, Civil War. I think that was the worst war that this country ever had to go through. Uh, and, and it's, well, you, you can't explain it. it, it just happened. And it was awful when it did. And uh, I think uh, I was lucky being in the Second World War rather than in the Civil War. Yes. Although some of us who were not in the round in the Second World War would look back and see what you, as part of the greatest generation, have, some people have called it, the sacrifices that you made. And I'm going to ask you a few questions to fill us in a little bit about what that was like. Uh, you apparently feel pretty good about your service and that it wasn't the worst thing you ever did, uh, but uh, we want to flesh that out a little bit. Uh, first of all, were you working or were you in high school when the war broke out and things came to the point of uh, you would have to go in? Uh, no, I had uh, finished four, four years of high school and one year of college. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I quit because I, I, I just felt that I had to get into the Army. Yes. For uh, just, just my age and my time that I should do it. What that's, that's college? What what college were you at? Well, St. Charles College in Catonsville, Maryland. Okay, all right. And uh, then uh, uh, did a, about half a year at Johns Hopkins University. Okay. Had you seen some of your close friends being drafted or enlisting? Uh... Uh, I knew a few, mm -hmm. not, not too many. Okay. And so you uh, knew that you were going to be drafted and... Yes, I wanted to be. You wanted to be drafted. And uh, you were inducted, uh, where was that? Uh, at Fort Meade, Maryland. Fort Meade, Maryland. On, in January 1945, I guess it was four. Okay. I think it was four. Forty-four. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just a few days or a few weeks later, you were shipped off to some place for basic training. Camp Villa, Georgia. Okay. And it so happened that I had some rel close relatives who lived fairly close to to uh, the, the fort, in yes. Macon, Georgia, and uh, so that, that that made it more interesting uh, that uh, when the Army finally saw fit to give us uh, pass, <laughs> passes, I could go see uh, for, uh, relatives and friends in, yes. in Macon. Yeah, that would have been a weekend passes that yeah, you got yeah. uh, while you were in basic training. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, how would you sum up your uh, basic training? Was it uh, a rough thing, tough challenges? No, I don't think so. It was, it was, uh, they expected you to work and to run and to push up and do all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't remember all the details now. Yeah. But uh, I remember uh, the, the, you couldn't believe a word the non coms told us. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. They, they'd say, uh, uh, you don't get, get down. Uh, you'll get shot. Well, we found that, you know, 
we found out you could get up quite a bit but not get shot. Oh, I see. Yeah. And uh, uh, what was it? Maggie's drawers. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> On the gun range, right? right Rifle range. Right, right. Yes. Yeah. Did you see a few of those yourself? Oh yeah. <laughs> And yet, on your uniform, your picture, there is a, uh, a medal of some accomplishment on the rifle range. You know, let's look at that right now, and uh, I will zoom in that. If you will hold that in front of you so that we can look at that. And, uh, at this point, I couldn't tell you what it was. Yeah, we yeah, got that. Real spill right here on the left camera. Well, uh, the fact that you got it, I think, attests to some skill with the uh, uh, rifle. What rifle did you use in basic training there? The M1. M1. Mm -hmm. And that was a pretty good World War II rifle, yes, wasn't it? it? Was. I yeah. think that's what, what nearly everybody had. Yep, yep. And uh, did you... I, I couldn't have carried anything heavier anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to ask you if you graduated to a BAR later on, perhaps. But uh, I had a friend who was a BAR man. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I saw him after the war. He was, uh, he lived in a, uh, eight, it seems to me it was eight floors up, uh, up water, water uh, flat. Yes. No. Anyhow, after the war, I was going to college and I, I in, in, going to take uh, courses in New York at Fordham. And I, I looked up uh, this guy in New York and uh, he stayed all over after the war was over because he, he liked to shoot craps and he made made a made a, mi a million hmm. on his own yeah and came home with it wow so I never told anybody yeah yeah might have got him in trouble yeah made his fortune that way um, what was a highlight of your basic training uh, anything special or anything terrible nothing really terrible. Mm -hmm. That, uh, we had a number of uh, fellows who were too old. They shouldn't have been in it, mm. and uh, they, they fainted or passed out. Mm -hmm. Couldn't couldn't run. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do what they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I felt sorry for those yeah. guys. Yeah. And uh, there was one time when uh, we got up in the morning and found a coral snake in the area behind our pup tents. Ah. But uh, other than that, it, it wasn't all that yeah. bad. Okay. Uh, how many weeks was basic training for you? I think it was eight. Eight weeks? I, I think. Mm -hmm. And did you go on to some further advanced uh, training? Uh, no. You were ready to be shipped out then? Right. Shipped and us down to, to uh, it was a, uh, the General, USS General Meigs. Okay. It was a Coast Guard transport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we used that to fodder carry people back and forth across the ocean. I see. And uh, I was lucky in that I was in a, uh, in a compartment where we, we got three meals a day. Everybody else only got two. Oh. But we had to had a lot of guard duty. Yes. Yeah. And of course, back in then, I was smoking. Mm -hmm. I started smoking when I was in high school, like an idiot. Yeah. But uh, in, during the war, in the, in the We'd open up cigarettes uh, at night by ducking down beneath the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the foxhole. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. This is in, in, in on the ship. Oh, I see. Be too, be yellow beneath the navy man. Be, right. be the uh, the railing. Uh, right. Okay. Okay. Down below the. Oh, so we could duck beneath there and and d d get a quick a cigarette light. And light your cigarette. Yeah. But you had to keep it down under. You didn't uh -huh. want any U boats to see it. Okay. And uh, 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 Catherine Cornell and Brian Ahern were in a uh, uh, show. Mm -hmm. It was uh, in. It was a big hit in Broadway, and they were supposed to put it on on the ship. Well, they uh -huh. did put it on on the ship. And I wanted to see it, but of course I was stuck on guard duty and couldn't go see it. I see. Now those are names that are not familiar to me, but those were popular stars back right, in right, your generation. Right. Yeah. Catherine Cornell and Brian Ahern. 
yeah. Uh, in your written memoirs, you say something about the uh, transport across the Atlantic, mm -hmm. some of the uh, maneuvering uh, yeah, to avoid yeah. enemy subs. Yeah, uh, we, uh, for the first few days out from Newport News, we had good air coverage. Mm -hmm. But then the air coverage ceased, and ah. there, was, there was no more air coverage until yes. we got close to Gibraltar. Yes. So I, I was very glad to see uh, air cover come out from, from Gibraltar yeah. because I didn't want to be want the ship to be sunk. Did you have destroyer escorts? Any Navy uh, uh, give you some? Maybe a little going out, but not all the way. Is that right? But, but the, the USS General Meigs was a huge uh, ship. Uh -huh. It could pretty much take care of itself. Yeah. Except uh, uh, if there was a real uh, dilemma. Yeah. So you uh, headed for the Mediterranean. Yes. And what was your first stop then? Gibraltar. Or Gibraltar. We uh, uh, put, st stopped there to uh, put in mail, take down, okay. give them mail, Yeah. and uh, to pick up mail. Mm -hmm. And then we went to Iran to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Only there, uh, the city of Iran was so high up on a cliff that uh, they couldn't get the mail to us. <laughs> So we had to, every, everything had to go up by uh, cable. Yeah. We pulled up to Iran and, and, and for the uh, mail, and, and the outgoing mail had to be put down. Uh, and then from there, we went straight to Naples. Naples, okay. So um, Italy had already been invaded. Yes. And you were adding on to the, uh, the forces moving up in Italy. Right. And you were with the 88th, 88th Infantry 88th Division. Infantry Division. Yeah. And from Naples, you headed north. Uh, a lot of resistance at first, or what did you meet in terms of Germans? Uh, we, actually, I was lucky that, that the the, the, we, the, the, uh, the real German uh, uh, commandos. Uh, were much tougher than the ones in the south. Yes. We we didn't have, really didn't have any any problem with them. We were just uh, there. Okay. And, uh, let's see. We we, we spent uh, spent time in a. Uh, I want to say concentration camp. But that isn't what I mean. Prisoner of war. No no no. no. It was replacement. Hmm? In what replacement camp? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Because it, it was a, a hunk of replacements, a, a large number of them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, staging area. Yeah, okay, a staging area where staging you were, area. yeah, that, that's, okay, that's it. all right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, well, well, north to somewhere in, in Tuscany, and uh, uh, we, I, don't, I never knew exactly where it was, but we had to, they gave us a, an M1. Was uh, have you ever cleaned a rifle with cosmoline? No. Well, don't you don't want to do it. It's pretty thick, it's a, isn't it's it? A, it's an awful mess. Yes. So we, we had to, we they gave us a every man his a rifle M1 rifle, and you had to clean it out and uh, uh, eventually fire it mm -hmm. and uh, get it ready to, to use. Mm -hmm. So we finally made made that, and then they shipped us north further. And uh, we were just outside of uh, the, uh, was it, I should be able to think of the name of it. River or mountain or, uh, no? No. Any, anyhow, we, sh we should have. Uh, Got anything in there that will help? <laughs> uh, Sully, Tuscany, each man has given a ride back Cosmoline. Three days to clean out the Cosmoline. Uh, yeah, that, that's it. Oh. That's it. Eventually, for, and then you're taken to the castle at Castel del Rio. Cas Castel del Rio, yeah. You mean you didn't get your M1s until you landed no, there? No. Oh. And M M1s in, in uh, the state. Training, yes. But they didn't give us any until we got to. I uh, see. Europe. I see, okay, 
All right. Did you encounter any shelling from the Germans? Any 88? Some, but not, not if we had been further south, we would, we would yeah. have been, like Anzio. Okay. That would have been terrible. Okay, you, you, okay. You'd be lucky to survive that. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, we were, uh, and, and when uh, the, the, some of the 88th Division troops were the first ones to enter Rome, they were, you know, uh, the whole town, everybody in Rome was... Uh, celebrating mm -hmm. the, the fact that Rome had been t taken and the, the Germans had to get out. Yeah. But uh, we were a bit beyond that. I see. And, okay. Uh, yeah. So the 88th did take Rome. The 88th did take Rome. Before but we, you. We weren't, we weren't there. You were a replacement to right. the 88th. Right. I see. Further north. Right. That's when you started engaging the enemy. Right. Okay. All right, and that would have been about the spring of 44? No, 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 the fall. Oh. October. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's when we, we joined. Mm-hmm. And uh, in, in, during the uh, winter, we uh, went on a patrol in the snow hmm. with... Uh, one of, one of several uh, first or second lieutenants, and uh, it was a bright moonlit night, and all of a sudden, six guys stood up and just threw down their guns and, and wanted to surrender. Yes. They were Czechs. They, they yes. didn't want to die for Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we celebrated that. <laughs> got free passes to Monte Catini. Because of that. Which was a Fifth Army rest Yeah, uh-huh. And... Uh, and then I uh, got uh, pneumonia. Mm -hmm. uh, well, before that, though, uh, we went out. We were set, there, there was there, there was a group of uh, Italian farmers who had gone out and dug a hole in the ground, so where they thought they could stay until the war. Ruled over them, mm -hmm. and then they could just go back to their farm and live as they always did. Yes, but uh, they finally ran out of food, and they sent people back to the rear, begging us to come get them out. They they couldn't, uh, they could had no more food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went out to get them, and it was in early December, and uh, we had to get them back through uh, across a stream, and I was charged with getting the little guys across. Mm -hmm. And of course, I, I slipped and fell, and I was up to my neck in water in, in mid early December. Mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was freezing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't get uh, pneumonia yet. Mm -hmm. I, I got it a month or so later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bitter experience right there. Well, it, was, it, was, it wasn't all that bad. I didn't mind it. <laughs> I didn't think I would... Well, when I, when I did get... Uh, Things got got worse. I, I got put into a hospital on, on Highway 65 and then sent to Monte Catini mm -hmm. to recuperate. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it wasn't all that bad. Okay, I survived. Right. Yeah. Did you get much hot chow in those months? Yeah, a fair amount. Not mm -hmm. not. You got a lot of C rations and K rations mm -hmm. too. And uh, this uh, fellow uh, Roy Anderson. Yes. Well, I, I had been wounded in October, mm -hmm. and they sent me to a, a Fifth Army Rest Center in way back in, in southern Italy. And uh, uh, can you tell us how you got wounded? Yeah. Uh, uh, th this was when. The, the worst day I ever lived through. Really? When they sent us, to, sent us down to the bottom of the hill to, mm -hmm. to uh, fi find Lieutenant Rose for the yes. company commander. And, mm -hmm. uh, was that October 9th? Yes. Yeah, not 9th or 10th, I'm not sure which. And was it raining or dry? Mm -hmm. What was the weather like? It was dry. Okay. Uh, but the company commander sent the Vernon Fidoi and me to go down the hill and find Lieutenant Rose and tell him that he wanted him. Mm -hmm. and we uh, started off down the hill and 
at first it wasn't so bad. We'd jump into a shell hole whenever we needed one. You know. mm -hmm. And uh, eventually we came to shell holes that were full of guys who, all of them, just about, were all of them, period, uh, had no guts. Mm -hmm. their, their guts were hanging out. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that was the most gruesome thing I've ever seen. Or heard. Yeah. Yeah. And the worst, worst day I've ever had to live through. Yeah. Yeah. Were they all dead? Or were they being... Well, either they were dead or they were almost dead. Their, their, their guts were just hanging out. Yeah, and there's nothing to do for them in right. that condition. Okay, yeah. I mean, even if they'd been in the hospital, I don't yeah. think any, any surgeon could have done anything to yeah. help them. Yeah, So we kept going down. After we got past them, we kept going down. And after a while, we thought, hey, this is crazy. The Germans are going to get us if we don't get back up. Mm -hmm. So we started back up the hill. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were almost to the top. And we were... There was a machine gun on the right flank that kept firing whenever we got up and ran. Mm -hmm. And finally we were almost to the top. And uh, uh, the, uh, I, got, I, got, I yelled, ouch. Mm -hmm. I had, looked back and saw blood on my raincoat. It, 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 it had been raining a lot, mm -hmm. so I had a raincoat on. Mm -hmm. But I had a right, right here, my left inguinal region, uh, I had, a, had some, some uh, uh, blood. Mm -hmm. And the uh, medic said, well, you've got a million dollar wound, it'll t get you back to the States. No such luck. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. They sent me uh, with uh, enough, three or four other guys who were walking wounded. They told us to go down the back of the mountain we were on, climb to the top of the next mountain, and you'll find the, the, the battalion aid station. Mm -hmm. So we both, we all three, I think there were three of us, we sat down and in the mud and just slid down the bottom of the, the mountain, crossed the stream, and then crossed the mountain on the other side. Mm. When we got there, uh, we couldn't find the aid station, but we did find a, a German, I mean an Italian farmhouse. Mm -hmm. So we opened the door and went in, lay down in the straw and went to sleep. The, the uh, Italian farmhouses were very extremely well built, mm -hmm. so, so lots of stone. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually it was just not the family, but their, 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 uh, all their uh, extended family, extended family, and uh, uh, cattle? cattle, cattle, yes, yes, pigs, whatever. Yes. <laughs> so we just opened the door and went in and hit the sack, hit uh -huh. the straw. And the next morning we found out we were in the pigs' quarters. <laughs> <laughs> and when we got out, we saw the. Uh, Battalion aid station was about a hundred yards away. Oh my goodness! In bright sunlight. Yeah. So yeah. they they then put me in a uh, uh, I think it was in a, at first I, I think uh, they put me in an ambulance and took me to a hospital uh, in in the it was in the war in the walls of a school and uh, Fernzola. Hmm. Ferenzola. Probably. I, I ne never was sure of the name, but I think it was. Ferenzola, you said? Ferenzola. Yeah. And uh, uh, eventually they, they put me in a hospital in, on uh, the Ligurian seacoast. Okay. And there they, they uh, pulled out the uh, wound in my in my chest. In, my in your back, yeah, mm -hmm. shoulder, yeah. And you got your uh, Purple Heart. Yeah, from, from the, the hospital. Mm hmm I see. And do you recall what that shrapnel was? Just a tiny little piece of shrapnel, really. But Some, it was, someone identified it as uh, from a German 88. Is that what um, they say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know what it was at the time. Mm -hmm. So they were shelling you overhead. Up, 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 coming back up the mountain. Yeah, yeah I see. Yeah, okay, yeah. Those dirty German 88s were quite feared by you yeah, guys. Yes, yes, they were. Yes. Um, so how many weeks, months were you in recuperation from that wound before you got sent back to the front? Roughly? A month and a half, maybe uh -huh. at the most. Mm -hmm. Did you feel you were fit to go back? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. And when I got back, uh, I... Excuse me. Found uh, 
had, had to find a place to a foxhole to li live in. <laughs> and all I could find was a, a hole in the ground covered with a lot of logs and piled up with uh, weeds and whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, it ended up that I and three other guys uh, were the only ones living in there. There was no place else to, to go, so mm -hmm. we stayed in there. And it, it wasn't very happy, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, Rich Young was, became my best friend, mm -hmm. my buddy for the rest of the war. Mm -hmm. And I, I always thought a lot of him. Yeah. In fact, after we came home, uh, we had bought a new house in Annandale, Virginia, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, one night, it was, I think we had just moved in, uh, who comes in but Rich Young and his family. Mm. We had had no place to put him. I can't remember how, I don't know how he found out we were there, because we had just moved. Was that the first time you had seen him then since the war? No, I'd oh. seen him a number of times. Uh -huh. so we okay. Came, we yeah. kept in touch. Wow, that's special. That's interesting you said you found a hole to live in. Somebody has said about you guys in the ground, home is where you dig it. Right, right. And that applied to you very much? Yes. There, there was one, one place in, uh, after, just after Christmas, I think, uh, we were, uh, we, we, we'd come up, we'd spend the night in a, in a, uh, uh, Anyhow, it, it was a, a large farmhouse, really. Mm -hmm. But it was so located that the German artillery could not get at it. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a great place to stay. So we went there to spend the night. And then we had to go come up at nighttime and go up the hill to the... Uh, and then you got to the top and go down the hill to your foxhole you were supposed to be on for the night. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, This, this one night, uh, every, all hell broke loose. Uh, found out later that Roy Anderson was killed there that night. Oh, he was, that's a good friend of yours also, yeah, was yeah. killed, yes. And uh, uh, anyhow, he, we'd, we'd go down in, after, after we'd, oh, went up, this, this one night we went up there, and we didn't know it at the time, but afterwards, we found out that the uh, uh, the Germans were lobbing all kinds of uh, shells in there at, right at the checkpoint. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, we went down the hill to take out our positions we were in for the night. And uh, I heard... A, a, could hear a shell coming in, and uh, you 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 soon learn that you you know when or when or whether or not a shell is is close enough that you need to duck. Yeah. And uh, I decided it wasn't close enough to duck. And uh, there were two of us. One one the other guy I was sharing the foxhole with, with was Joe White. I don't remember where he came from, uh -huh. but he must have been around <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, the, the uh, I was I we were taking turns on guard duty. One yeah. Of, one of us would stay under under. We had a. Uh, uh, A cover over the one end of the foxhole, mm -hmm. so that that could stay relatively warm and, and dry. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other fellow would stay up and on guard. Mm -hmm. And it was my turn to stand up on guard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided that uh, I didn't have to stand up. It wasn't it wasn't going to be close enough that I had to worry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, something somebody pulled me down. I don't know who or what. Yeah. I never, never, never intended to come down. I didn't think I needed to, uh -huh. but somebody, God or an angel or something, yeah. pulled me down. I always get get uh, teary when I go into this. That's but yeah. 
I survived, and I yeah. don't know why. Yeah, one of those awesome moments that, yeah, right. uh, wow. Which leads me to the next question about Christmas of 44. How did you observe that? Was there any way that you gave any special attention to the day? Uh, had no, no opportunity to, mm -hmm. uh, ex except that uh, uh, to the extent that we could, we did pay attention to Christmas and, and uh, try to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see any chaplains out there on the front lines? Uh, a couple times, yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Larry to uh, bring out this book. Um, there are a couple pictures there of the 351st Infantry Regiment mm -hmm. that we will focus on. Right. The um, first picture there is uh, formation of your regiment, and the caption says, Secretary of War Henry L. Stimson inspects the 351st at... Uh, what's that name? I can't see that there. Taquinia? And that's in Italy, right? Is it? I, I don't know. What does it uh, say? It, it, uh, there was a lot of uh, training in, in the U.S. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's, let's go to the next picture then. Next one here. Oh, okay. Secretary of War Henry L. Stimson and Sexton. He should be pressed at Tarquinia. Well, apparently he, he did go over and look. And then the other picture is a picture of troops uh, in combat situation. Blue Devils dashed for cover after establishing a bridgehead on the north bank of the Po. Okay, can you turn that book around so we can get that on camera, that particular picture? All right. Now, you may be among them. I don't think so. All right. But you're moving fast, whoever we, those are. We were, we yeah. were heading okay. across the pole. Across the pole. And we, after we got across the pole, we, okay. we bivouacked for the night. And then we started up the night. We made a uh, hike 30 kilometers in one night, one day, mm -hmm. to get to uh, Verona. And it was right. my 21st birthday. Getting to Verona on yes, your 21st yes, birthday? We're just outside of Verona on my 21st birthday. Wow. And uh, that's when uh, uh, this German armored car came up and uh, started firing and it killed two of our guys, Willett and Glober. Uh -huh. And uh, and the, the rest of us started firing and the, this German armored car thought better of it and turned around, went down, back down the road it came mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. Happy 21st birthday, soldier. Right. Yeah. Now you're old enough to drink legally, and you're in Italy. <laughs> that was no problem. Yeah, right. Did you uh, sample the Italian wine? Well, of course. Yeah. Okay. Not stupid. Good, 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 good. I didn't know if you'd have a chance to take a break from action to... Uh, oh, there were opportunities. There are opportunities. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so after you got to Verona... Uh, what stage was the war in? Was it, 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 it was almost over. Almost over. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, uh, we were do doing a lot of riding on tanks at the time in the Po Valley. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a lieutenant, Lieutenant Thompson, who always said that uh, when... Uh, the war ended, he was going to dig himself a foxhole and jump in it until all the celebratory shooting was over. There was absolutely no celebratory shooting. The poor guy, uh, the, the day he was killed, uh, uh, he, he, it was the t tank, the tank uh, went too close to the uh, uh, wall. Yeah. And it, it killed Lieutenant Thompson and uh, also a, 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 uh, uh, um, um, what do you call him, aid. Medic? Medic, a medic. Yeah. Medic was crushed to death against yeah. a stone wall. Yeah. And Lieutenant Thompson 
never did. Uh, yeah. He wanted to. He was going to dig a foxhole and for himself and stay in it until the war was over. But yeah. he, he died, yeah. was killed before yeah. he got there. Yeah. Do you recall um, in June of '44 hearing anything about the invasion in Normandy? Was that news? Shared with you guys well, down I, I there. I thought it was had already been. But when 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 did Normandy happen? That was June sixth of forty four. And that had happened before you got to. Uh, I think, I think yeah. it must have. Okay. All right. Yeah. I just wondered how much you were aware of uh, other theaters of combat. Well, pretty much. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. But, yeah. You had uh, uh, Bill Malden and the. Uh, Top ten poets and all that stuff. Okay. That told you what was going on. Oh, you got that stuff. Yeah, let's look at some of Bill Malden's stuff. Um, you had access to that, and I suppose you found it uh, humorous and well, of course. sometimes very true. Yeah. yeah. Quick beef, or I'll send you back to the infantry. Yeah, let's look at that one. Let's uh, turn forever, that around. So. There's a chaplain. Oh, is there? <laughs> forever, amen. Hit the dirt. <laughs> all right, let's look at those two. Okay, I'm on the left page there, and that's the one that says, what does it say there at Quit the bottom? beefing, or we'll send you back to the infantry. All right, and this that's a medic, right? That's a medic talking yeah. to another medic. Okay, all right. The and one. then the other one is? Chaplain's uh, just finishing prayer, and he's got men at ground, and he says, forever, amen. All Get right. Okay. <laughs> Get your heads down. Get your head down. He's, okay. he's listening. Years and then coming. Okay. Had to be sensible. Yes, yeah. Too. Let's see. Uh, Ernie Pyle was also an uh, infantry uh, uh, correspondent, wasn't he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Malden was the cartoonist. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful fellow to have on your side. River, amen. Hit the dirt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about uh, mail from home and mail that you sent home? Was that pretty good for you? Did you get things in and out pretty well? Yes, but not not going to get there in two days. Right. Uh, I, I remember I, I spent a lot, long time in the uh, South after I was wounded. Uh huh. And uh, uh, we, we had, first I was in, a, in the hospital, had a wonderful time there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I took. Uh, it was halfway up the mountain, and the funicular railroad that came up. Oh, yes. And uh, it was a, from the hospital, it was halfway up the mountain on a, uh, actually sort of a plateau. You could look down and see the whole world beneath you. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we got on the, on the, when was, after a while they gave me day passes to go down into Naples. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd uh, go down there, and, and uh, one time I, I saw three operas in a row there. Wow. And do uh, you recall what those were? I should have it written down somewhere. Yeah, I did. Uh, it's like the Barber of Seville. Barber of Seville. Oh. What? And, uh, I'm sorry. Barbara Seville, The Marriage of Figaro, and Rigoletto. Right, right, that's right. Wow. What happened at that, uh, remember seeing that? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I don't know, it was one of those or another one that uh, the uh, uh, conductor yeah. got mad at the audience because they were, uh, apparently the audience uh, thought some of the uh, singers were, had collaborated too much with the Germans, oh. and so they were in trouble. And the uh, audience was screaming at him. Yeah. The conductor banged his baton and, and, and told him to shut up. <laughs> Very interesting. So there were some collaborateurs among well, the... From, the... From that, there yeah. must have been. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He said, he turned and said, first in, in uh, Italian and then in English, this is a dramatic performance. Very angry that they mm. would interrupt his mm -hmm. opera. Mm -hmm. Good, you found it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
So after uh, the Germans surrendered, what was your rest of your term then in Italy or in Europe? What, uh, where, where did you? Well, believe it or not, I, they told me I was transferred to the 719th Railway Operating Battalion. Hmm. As far as I know, there never was a 719th <laughs> Railway Operating Battalion. That must have been. Uh -huh. But no, no, nobody else ever showed up but me. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I, anyhow, they ended up putting me on a troop ship, headed back home, Oh. Uh, for the, because I was transferred to the 719th Railway Operating Battalion. I, I never found anybody else who was. Oh my goodness. So nothing for you to do because right. nobody else? And when I, when I got home, I think it was a, uh, had a, uh, a troop ship that took me from somewhere very north in, in, the, uh, in, in Italy yes. on, the, on the water. Yes. I can't remember exactly where it was. But uh, Leghorn, Livorno, I don't know what it was. Uh, but when I got home, uh, nobody had ever heard of the 719th Railway Operating Battalion. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's funny. <laughs> you got a break there, didn't you? Home a little bit early. Yeah. Well, uh, I was still in the army. Though, yeah. Yeah. And they, they, they transferred me down to uh, uh, Fort. Uh, Fort, not Fort Meade. Uh, was the uh, in New Jersey? No, 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 no. no. In, in Tennessee. The, Ooh. Uh, the, the idiots at Fort Meade decreed that we had to go down to about six or seven of us had to get on a train and go down to uh, Oak Ridge. Oh. Uh huh. And. Uh, we got there the uh, night before Christmas, I think, and uh, uh, we couldn't get into the USO because everybody had closed up for the night, but somebody uh, went and raised a bit of hell, and, and uh, they, they sent, uh, sent people to, to Get us, get us a bed. Yeah. And what they did was open a lot of cots in a USO. Mm hmm And uh, we, the next morning, we woke up. We all had uh, been bit, bitten by bed bugs. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, eye, eyelids were all uh, puffed up. Yeah. And yeah. I've never, never encountered any uh, bed bugs any other place. Mm -hmm. Back home in the states. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, we're getting down to the point where I want to kind of begin wrapping this up. A uh, few more questions I have. Did you have any brothers or sisters or cousins who were in the war at the no, same time? No, no. I have a sister, but she wasn't in the yeah. war. She was right. a nurse. Yeah. And uh, when you got discharged, what did you begin? You went to school, back to college? Yes. Came back home and uh, went to... Uh, Loyola College to, to finish. Mm -hmm. college and what kind of a program? What did you focus on? Chemistry. Chemistry. And what did you do then with your chemistry degree? Well, well, first I, I, I got got in uh, Loyola, and then I went to Fordham uh -huh. in, in New York. Uh -huh. I, I loved that. Uh -huh. That was fantastic. Uh -huh. Nice girls. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, there were. Four of us, two girls and another guy and I, and we would always take one one day a week, and which we just forgot about studying or, or work, and we always went someplace. Yeah, you know, a little different. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, have you worked as a chemist uh, yeah. all your the rest of your life? Uh, not, not the rest of my life, but a, a large yeah. part of it. In the D.C. area, or. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Has it been a, a good civilian life in your profession? Are you well, satisfied with it? I enjoyed it. Yeah. And when and where did you meet your wife? Uh, where I worked. Okay. And, uh, well. She's also a chemist? Oh, no. Retired? No. no, no. no. Okay. Not, not a chemist, not retired. Okay. All right. Oh, all right. Still bringing in the... Well, no, no, she's she's not working. She's home. I see. Yeah. 
I mean, she's the one that answered the phone. When yeah, okay. Yeah. You have children? Yes. And are they familiar with uh, your story and your military? Just to some degree. No some way. degree. You wrote some uh, very yeah. good uh, paragraphs here, pages for your family. Is that what the intent was? I th yeah, I think so. Yeah. But our, our children were Lisa, Madeline, Gregory, Laura, and Mark. Ah. Okay. You got a nice, good-sized family and some grandchildren, I would presume. Right, right. Yeah. All right. Uh, have you been in touch with any of the veteran service organizations since you got out of the Army? Well, I'm not sure exactly. VFW, uh, American Legion? American Legion, yes. Mm -hmm. And I've gone to the uh, uh, VA hospital in uh, Martinsburg, West Virginia. I see. Okay. Okay. Have you been to any reunions of the 88th or your uh, um, infantry uh, regiment? No, no, no. I've, I've, I've always wanted to, but mm -hmm. I've never, never known exactly when or where one of these would take place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Larry, do you have any questions that you uh, can think of that you'd like to ask Joe? Uh, just one, and that is, uh, uh, can you recall uh, when you learned the war was over? When I learned the war was over, yeah. oh. you were when, the, when the Germans came down the hill, and, and uh, what happened I think there? we a uh, uh, German officer with a, a white flag came down the hill and said, "What's the matter with you guys? Don't you know the world is o war is over?" Ah, uh, and you didn't know. We didn't know it. Oh, um. it, it, it was incredible that our rear echelon officers didn't know the war was supposed to end on uh, uh, May second. And, hmm. Uh, I can't believe this. Yeah. It 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 happened. Yeah. They yeah. should have known. They should have been told. Yeah. And they weren't. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, um, any final comments you would like to make about your service, your military service, or life in general uh, as a citizen of the USA? I can just say that I've had a great life. Wonderful. And I'm happy. Wonderful. And I have a good wife. Yes. And uh, a, lot, a lot of children and yeah. grandchildren. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, life is good. Well, great. Thank you for that testimony and thank you very much for your service to our country and for your delightful sharing of your story for the Veterans History Project, Joe. I, I, I appreciate it, your, your interest in it, and uh, gives me a chance to speak. Uh, make it, get out and say things that I yeah should say yeah yeah that's right that's what it's all about well thank you very much.